Hello, I'm Tamara Pope, Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Hamilton Health Sciences Foundation. As our Innovations in Vital Care series continues, we hope that you are enjoying hearing from some of the experts at Hamilton Health Sciences. For this week's episode, our focus turns to blood cancers and other hematological diseases. This is an area where the team at Jurevinsky Hospital and Cancer Center has been responsible for so many Canadian firsts over the years. Dr. Tom Karukas is chair of the Hematology Disease Site Group at Jurevinsky Cancer Center. And he will speak about blood cancers, the importance of the site for the care of hematology patients, as well as new innovations in blood cancer care. For today's episode of Innovations in Vital Care, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tom Karukas. Good day, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Tom Karukas. I'm a uh, hematologist. I work uh, full-time at the Jurevinsky Hospital and Cancer Center in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. We're obviously the cancer program for Hamilton Health Sciences. Let's talk a little bit about what blood diseases are um, because it's often uh, hard to understand, but blood diseases at a high level are any, any disease that affects uh, the blood or the blood counts, the bone marrow function, or the lymphatic system. And this means the lymphatic system means the lymph node system or the spleen. Uh, that system is actually a very active uh, antibody generating system. It's a very important part of our immune system to have functioning uh, lymphatic system. And there's a huge variety of these blood diseases. So some of them uh, are like cancers, like leukemias, for example, acute and chronic leukemias or lymphomas, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's types, and other diseases like myeloma. These are diseases that behave very much like cancers. There's other diseases that are not quite uh, truly cancers, but behave in a similar fashion. These would be uh, myeloproliferative diseases uh, where the spleen enlarges and the blood counts become abnormal. These are treated along the same lines. And also diseases like myelodysplastic syndrome, where there's an abnormality in the bone marrow that results in uh, altered blood counts and low blood counts. And these people need treatment along the same lines as we will discuss shortly chemotherapy or stem cell transplantation. There are other diseases that are less aggressive that are blood diseases. Uh, these are not often seen at the Jurevinsky site as the purpose for our team is to focus more on the more significant life-threatening ones such as leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, and some of the other ones that I have listed on the slide. But essentially blood diseases affect uh, the blood counts, the bone marrow function. They can cause the glands to become swollen in the in the neck or under the arm or in the groin, and they be, often can result in the liver or spleen becoming enlarged too. In terms of treatments for blood diseases, uh, I think it's good to think about them in different categories. For example, chemotherapy would be a commonly used treatment for blood diseases. Chemotherapy is essentially a very traditional type of cancer treatment. These are medications that are given either by injection or pills orally that are designed to kill any cell in the body that is growing rapidly. So this includes a lot of cells that are part of blood diseases like leukemia or lymphoma. It also affects cells like hair follicles and the cells that are in our mouth and in our digestive tract. And thus you have kind of traditional chemotherapy side effects such as hair loss, nausea, and low blood counts because of the side effects of those types of medications. There are, however, now a lot of treatments that involve using targeted therapy for blood diseases. So these are medications. Again, they can be injections or pills. These are drugs that are very targeted for a certain aspect of the diseased cell. It could be a protein on the surface, a marker on the surface, or something inside the cell that is specifically blocked by one of these newer medications. The benefit of using these medications is not only that they are often very effective, but their effectiveness comes with uh, lesser side effects. And you can use these tar targeted treatments either by themselves or actually in combination with traditional chemotherapy. Uh, immunotherapy is also a type of uh, target therapy in a way. So immunotherapy is very commonly used now in cancer treatment, including to treat blood diseases. And immunotherapy means that you've designed an antibody. An antibody, if you remember, is a naturally produced molecule that our immune system makes to help us fight infections like viruses and bacteria. But you can engineer antibodies in the lab to actually target cancer cells. And uh, the way that they target cancer cells is by binding to a protein on the surface. 
and then causing the cell to die. For example, rituximab in the diagram is a very commonly used targeted immunotherapy in lymphomas, and it kills lymphoma cells by sticking onto a surface protein and causing the cell to die, or by sticking onto the surface of that lymphoma cell by bringing in then your healthy immune cells to help do the damage. Now, our hospital at the Jurevinsky, um, our malignant hematology division uh, here is a very specialized center for blood disease treatment. And the reason why we have such a large catchment area for our patients is because we're only one of three full service stem cell and cellular therapy centers in the province of Ontario. And the reason why there's only three of these centers is because this type of treatment um, is very complicated. It's very resource intensive. The treatment is very specialized. It's very expensive. You need to have highly trained staff. And I'm not just, on, just not talking about the doctors that need to be highly trained, but it's all of our nurses, our pharmacy staff, and all of our allied health um, partners as well, physiotherapists, dietitians, et cetera. The whole team needs to work hard to deliver this type of care. And thus, uh, there's only three such centers in Ontario that can provide the full gamut of stem cell and cellular therapy for, for patients. Uh, because of this specialty, we also have very active research programs uh, in, to treat blood diseases, to investigate blood diseases. And this spans basic science. That means lab research in the lab, using cells in test tubes under the microscope. To clinical research, that means bringing new treatments into the clinic, uh, early phase clinical trials or randomized clinical trials, testing new therapies in patients with blood diseases. And also what we call health services research, which means trying to understand the benefits, the risks, uh, the resource utilization, the quality of life perhaps in patients who are getting these uh, advanced therapies in terms of the impact to them, the impact to the healthcare uh, system, to society as a whole. That's called health services research. It's helpful for us to talk about cellular therapy because that is basically a kind of uh, more targeted therapy. Uh, and it's obviously one of the uh, therapies that is, is key for us at the Jurevinsky. As I've said, we're only one of three Ontario sites to provide a full service for this for for patients in Ontario. So transplantation therapy has been the original cellular therapy developed uh, well over 25 or 30 years ago now. A lot of the pioneering work was done at the Jurevinsky site uh, way back. And transplantation involves taking stem cells out of the person's body and giving them back to that person or to another person. And uh, the reason why this is possible is because when we take stem cells out of patients and put them back into somebody, they're able to regrow and they're able to repopulate the bone marrow. And you need that to be able to rescue people from some of the uh, high dose treatments that we use to try and get rid of their underlying blood disease. So in the picture here, I show you one of our Optia machines. These are stem cell phoresis machines uh, that we have at the Jervinsky site. These are uh, expensive, very unique pieces of equipment that allow us to collect stem cells from donors and patients for use in stem cell transplantation. So you can see in the cartoon on the right that the patient is hooked up to the stem cell machine. The blood goes into the machine. It gets spun and filtered. The white cells where the stem cells are get collected and frozen away, and the rest of the cells get returned back to the patient. And this can be done over a day or two days to collect enough stem cells to perform a stem cell transplant in an effective and safe manner. There are, of course, different types of stem cell transplants. So a common type is called autologous. Uh, that means that you're using the stem cells from the person themselves. And the reason why you need autologous stem cell transplants is because you're giving the person high dose chemotherapy to try and kill the tumor cells, like lymphoma or myeloma cells. And then you have to give that person back their stem cells to promote rapid recovery. That means recovery of their bone marrow within usually two to three weeks. An allogeneic transplant is a different type of transplant where you're using cells from a donor and the donor can be a, a matched donor or a haploidentical or a half-matched donor. And uh, we were one of the first centers 
in Canada to uh, start doing haploidentical allogeneic stem cell transplants on a regular basis. Um, the donor can be related, means uh, from a family member or unrelated from the registry. The registry can be Canadian registry, US registry, or, U or, or uh, you know, European registry. In an allogeneic stem cell transplant, the chemotherapy, it might be high dose or it might be lower dose. Uh, and then the cells are given back for two reasons. One is to promote recovery of the patient's bone marrow uh, so that they can recover quickly. And secondly, in an allogeneic stem cell transplant, you give the cells back so that they can actually fight the disease. So that's called graft versus leukemia effect or graft versus lymphoma effect. And it's the ability of the infused stem cells because they're from a donor to recognize the hematological, the blood disease of the patient and be able to fight it off along with the chemotherapy. The new stem cell unit uh, that we're excited to have uh, later this year is a critical piece to our future success. It's a um, 15 bed inpatient unit with expanded space to treat patients with uh, cellular therapy of all types of transplants. It also includes extra space for pharmacy and the lab and outpatient area, because as you may know, a lot of these transplants now are being done in an outpatient setting, which allows the person not to have to sleep in the hospital. It's um, more comfortable for them. And they're in, the, um, they're in the presence of their family members for support. And as the need for these procedures increases, we will need uh, more and more resources. So this is a very important piece for us moving forward. One other aspect of uh, cellular therapy that is uh, the new kid on the block is called CAR-T therapy. That stands for chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy. It's a mouthful. This is the newest type of cellular therapy. Um, and this one's different than transplants because it uses uh, not stem cells, but it uses the patient's uh, T-cells. T-cells are one of our immune cells. We have, of course, our body makes B and T-cells. We can collect the T-cells and we engineer them, we modify them to be able to fight the person's cancer or their blood disease uh, without needing to use drugs. Now, uh, interestingly, we were lucky and privileged to be at the Jervinsky site, one of the first two adult centers for CAR-T therapy in Canada. Uh, so we're very proud of our success there. And right now, CAR-T therapy is being done at the Jervinsky site uh, for patients with relapsed acute lymphoblastic leukemia and patients with relapsed uh, large cell lymphoma. The CAR-T process is uh, shown in this slide here. So the patient has T cells collected, they get isolated, and then they basically get engineered. And the way that they get engineered is very unique. You uh, infect them with a virus and the virus causes the T cells to change and you can tell the virus how to make the T cells change. And so the goal is to develop T cells, to grow them, that are modified, that are able to recognize the person's cancer. In the case right now, these cells are, rec are grown to recognize leukemia cells, ALL cells, and large cell lymphoma cells. Once they're grown and expanded, they can be uh, then given back to the patient. And then basically they do the treatment, they do the fighting for us, uh, and the patient gets monitored for two to four weeks as the CAR T cells uh, do their thing. There's a lot of new treatments coming on the horizon. So uh, in this brief presentation, we've touched upon traditional ways of using chemotherapy and targeted therapy, stem cell transplantation, and CAR T therapy now to treat a variety of different blood diseases. But we're also, as, um, as much as things have uh, improved in the last 10 to 15 years, we're, uh, we have ongoing excitement for what's coming. Um, so basically, CAR-T therapies, the ones we have now are considered first generation. So they're the first products available for use in humans. Um, there's a flurry of research activity looking at advancing CAR-T therapies by using better engineered T cells. So these would be T cells that are perhaps more effective in killing cancer cells and with uh, fewer side effects and being tested not only in leukemia and lymphoma, but in a number of other blood diseases as well. At the same time that this is going on, we're also, we also have access to 
newer targeted therapies. This would include newer antibodies, monoclonal antibodies to treat a variety of different blood diseases, and also more targeted therapies, such as uh, small molecules, for example, that can target uh, proteins inside leukemia cells. Of course, stem cell transplantation hasn't remained stagnant. Um, even though it's a very commonly used treatment, it is always undergoing evolution and refinement, and uh, there's ongoing advances for that. In particular, we're looking at now for allogeneic stem cell transplantation, better ways of preventing and managing one of the complications of allotransplant, which is called graft versus host disease. And so transplantation, therefore, will be more effective, less toxic, and perhaps even be able to be offered to, uh, to more patients than it currently is. So thank you for, uh, for watching uh, this webinar and uh, allowing me the opportunity to explain our very exciting program in uh, malignant hematology at the Jurvinsky Hospital and Cancer Center. And I wanted to primarily thank uh, our donors for, for the opportunity. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Karukas. That was very interesting. And you mentioned the new stem cell unit, which is uh, scheduled to be open later this year. Uh, what is it that you're most excited about uh, in terms of the new unit? We're really excited uh, by the fact that the new space will actually give us a little bit of breathing room. As you can imagine, uh, stem cell transplantation in Ontario and Canada has been getting busier and busier. There's more people that we've been doing uh, on the same footprint at the Jervinsky site. And this has come around with investments from the hospital in terms of staffing and hours of operation. But I think we've probably reached our capacity now for the current footprint. And so the new unit will allow us to expand the capacity, treat patients perhaps a bit more efficiently because they'll be able to get in and out of the beds more easily because there'll be more beds available. And also, uh, you know, when patients need our services after hours, we try and avoid sending them to the emergency room. Uh, that's not an ideal place for people with blood diseases, as you can imagine. And so we'll have the opportunity, uh, you know, to directly admit patients to the new unit if the need arises. That's great to hear. And you had mentioned uh, uh, the importance of donors uh, to making projects like the new stem cell unit possible. If you could send a message to donors, uh, what would you tell them? Yeah, like I said, our donors are critical for our success and they're our partners. I think from, the, from a malignant hematologist point of view as chair, it's our mission and passion really to provide the best care for our patients. And then we can only do this though with the help of donors, uh, like uh, those donors you know, listening to this webinar. I think it's uh, well known that the equipment that we need is very specialized and um, expensive. Hospitals, including ours, depend on donors for their generosity for us to be able to purchase and maintain the best equipment so we can deliver this care in the most modern and, and most effective way. And it's very apparent that you're very uh, passionate about the work you do. Uh, what is it about uh, the work you do that you find the most fulfilling personally? Thanks for that question. Yeah, it's hard to pin it down on one thing, uh, but I think, and I can speak for myself and all my colleagues, it's a, it's a pleasure really to work every day with patients and with my colleagues in malignant hematology uh, and with all of our staff, our nurse practitioners and our, and our nurses on the ward and in the clinic and our pharmacists and all of the allied health team. It's really a great team to work with. Uh, so that part is really gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of pleasure treatments have gotten so much better. Um, the outcome of patients now is way better than it used to be 10 or 15 years ago. And it's very rewarding to see patients with blood diseases improving. They improve their health. Many of them can get back to a pretty normal life or near normal life. And many of them can be cured of their blood disease. And that is the most gratifying thing is to see somebody cured of their blood disease. It's wonderful. Well, thanks so much for taking the time today to speak with us. That was very informative. Thank you. My pleasure always.